Hello, my name is Joe Todd Stanton and I'm a children's book author and illustrator. So I've published three books so far with La Col de Wazir, The Secret of Black Rock, A Mouse Called Julian, and The Comet. Yeah, I feel like the way books start are different every time in terms of that first little spark of an idea. I think the thing that's consistent throughout all three is they always start with an image, like uh, The Secret of Black Rock is the, the rock where you can see the rock above the water and him below. And then for A Mouse Called Julian, it's when he's going into his home and you can see the huge fox eye looking down on him. And then with the comet, it's um, Nyla reaching out to kind of grab this thing. And then that's something that kind of goes over and over in my head. And I kind of want to do that image justice. Like it's normally an image I love so much. I'm like, all right, how do I make the story worth the image kind of thing and then yeah it kind of normally grows out from there. I first started drawing because um, my mum actually was an illustrator and she quit when I was born so she became a teacher but then I think because she stopped she wanted to kind of carry on her love of drawing with me so when I was young we always used to draw together endlessly coming up with little stories together and stuff like that so you know, I loved daydreaming I think I like failed a lot of classes because I would just spend all my time looking out the window and coming up with stories in my brain. And luckily, that has actually translated into something. Yeah, I create the entire story visually uh, before I ever write a single word. And I think that really helps children understand it because I think we, we do start out way more visually than linguistically. So I didn't actually end up writing for a very long time just because I'm heavily dyslexic. So I really struggled with spelling. I never wrote any stories until a publisher asked me, do you want to try and write a book? And I thought I'd be stupid to say no. So I just tried and then it turned out okay. I really love drawing these kind of uh, cutaway illustrations because when I was a kid, I remember being so in love with all of those really detailed books you'd get of like, um, it would be castles or maybe like warships where you'd be able to see, you know, in each different room there'd be something going on. The amount of detail would always be incredible. There was, it's actually something that always frustrated me with lots of video games when I was a kid. Um, you'd have these like very old, this is going to like age me, but you'd have these old video games where it'd be like a car driving and you'd see this like amazing castle in the distance but you could never get there no matter how far you drove for and that kind of thing always frustrated me. So maybe something about like the books I do, I'm like, seeing these castles that I saw when I was a kid and yeah, wanting to explore them wanting to. I think when I was a kid, the stories that I loved the most were always the ones that kind of took me right to the edge of what I felt safe with in a story. The story I come back to over and over again is where the wild things are and that moment when the wild things turn on Max and they're chasing him, you know, it is, it's real. You're not really sure, whether, I mean, they say they're gonna eat him which is pretty bad, you know. And I think that did legitimately terrify me, but the older I've got, the more I've realized how much that book meant to me and how much it kind of uh, has informed all the kind of stories I write. So I definitely think there's something about that kind of the building of the tension and the release at the end, you know. I don't think every single story has to have it, but I think there is something so satisfying for me in finding different ways to kind of have that. I guess it's like the classic adventure, hero's journey tale. I always like a happy ending at least, you know. 